Yay, yes, ma'am. So we, yeah, you are live. So the um, I'm not sure you'll see the comments to like the right of you when they start coming in too as well. Okay. Cool. Cool. So. Yes, ma'am. Make sure I share this to my little, my my little page, little freedom therapy page. It's showtime. Hey, you guys, when y'all come in, just say hey. So we can acknowledge you. Come on, Shab come on, Shabrika. Okay. Faithful. I have to get you an award. Okay. <laughs> just, my girl has been here every night. Okay. I am going to get my friend an award for coming and supporting the kid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. She's been faithful. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, Amber. Good to see you again. Um, let's see. Hey, ma'am. Is that Elaine? Elaine? Am I pronouncing Elaine? Is that your friend? Yes. That's all right. Come on. I'm sorry for butchering your name. I have been butchering everybody's name for a while now. Um, good evening, Miss Sharon. Them, I go ahead and pronounce them and says Eula. Hey, Eula. Eula. Good evening. <laughs> I'm not look, I be butchering people names, man. Like I just be like, tell me your name. Okay. Right. It's it's all okay. it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, friends. Come on. All right. Come on, learn some great things. <laughs> she said, Thank you. She can <laughs> Yeah, I can't tell you. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even finna. I did, girl. I'm a, look, I am sorry. Y'all come on in. And y'all make sure if y'all can. Good. Look, thank you. <laughs> so, like, y'all make sure y'all come on in. Y'all make sure y'all share um this video with people and stuff like that. Um Make sure y'all share with y'all people, especially people who you know maybe um, may need this information or um, or anything like that. We're trying to um, really and truly help as many people as we can with these lives. Okay. Good evening, Miss Crystal. Hey, lady. Thank you for joining. Come on. So as we go on ahead, all right, ladies. So. For those of you that are new here tonight, thank you. Welcome um, to the stream. And so what we do over here every night, we will wait for a little bit to get everybody in. And then when everybody get in, we'll to do some deep breathing to get us settled and get ready for the information that you guys are about to intake. So like that's all I ask that you guys have an open heart, open mind, and a open spirit for healing and growing. That's it. If you have those things, you'll whatever we say tonight, you will use it and you'll know how to use it and stuff like that. So nonetheless, let's go ahead and start with our deep breathing. We're going to do three deep breaths and then we will um, we will I will do an introduction. So when you when we do the deep breath, deep breathing, you take a deep breath from your diaphragm, take it in and then exhale through your mouth. But exhale slowly through your mouth. OK, so here we go. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Relax those shoulders. Deep breath in, deep breath out. So the last one, big deep breath in. Deep breath out. All right, you guys. So welcome to tonight again. Um, before we jump into tonight's uh, live, I do want to say, give the disclaimer. Um, this does not substitute the relationship of a real life therapist. Although we are licensed clinicians on this live, we are still not have we don't have a therapeutic relationship with you guys so still go and seek a therapist if you need it um so we highly recommend it myself 
anybody else that has been on this live too as well. Um, they are all licensed clinicians and you all can reach out to them and you can all form some type of um, personal relationship. OK, but this right here is not therapy. Uh, it's not well, it's therapy, <laughs> but it's not a therapeutic relationship. Right. All right. So these are real life strategies that we do use with clients. So you are getting that part. We just we're just not your personal therapist. So but nonetheless, for those of you that do not know who I am, I am Danielle Bailey. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and board approved clinical supervisor here in the great state of Louisiana. And my practice resides in Alexandria, Louisiana. OK, so let me go ahead and pull up my guest right here. All right. So I have Julie. OK. <laughs> is, is your, your, your last name is Zeno, right? Zeno, yes. Yeah. Zeno, I got that together. She is a woman of uh, a woman of God, a social worker, in a mind, in uh, a mom to a brilliant little genius ten year old daughter named Jordan. All right, she is the founder and owner of Live to Win Academy LLC. Live to Win Academy offers both face to face and well-based life skill training and an interactive workbooks for personal success and intellectual empowerment. Julie's goal in life is to make it to heaven one day and bringing others along. That's it. Drop the mic. <laughs> that is it. Okay. <laughs> Come on. We don't need nothing else. Nothing else. Come nothing on. Nothing else. <laughs> I'm gonna say so. Her goal in life is to make it to heaven one day while bringing others along. If that is not the true definition of discipleship, I don't know what is. Come on, okay. <laughs> so y'all already know just by her bio what what amazing content she is bringing tonight. So I am honored and I am ex excited that you are here with me. Okay, go ahead, man. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Danielle. I am honored and excited to be here as well. As I always tell you, I think you're genius. I love the work that you're doing. I love the opportunities that you are giving um, to other um, women and men. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anxiety is near and dear to my heart because it's something that I have personally experienced in the past. And so um, it's one of the things that I like to help and to um, educate others on so that they too can um, start to thrive in life and not suffer when dealing with anxiety. And so um, talking about anxiety, um, anxiety can be both a good and a bad thing. You know, anxiety um, helps us to navigate through life um, and help us to, you know, be aware of situations, um, you know, when the threat really is real um, and when we are in danger. And so that's the good anxiety. We're talking about the bad anxiety tonight. Um, as you all know, anxiety is um, it's fear based. Um, there's a there's a factor in, in, in the anxiety that, that stems from some sort of fear of something. And so it can be crippling and um, debilitating. And your nervous system is literally under attack when you're dealing with the bad anxiety. Um, it should be taken very seriously and um, it should be treated. And if not, it can lead to um, other mental illnesses such as depression. It can it can lead to substance abuse. It can lead to um, physical illnesses, um, which then in return can can ultimately really um, lead to death. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the good news tonight is that um, we can we can manage effectively anxiety, right? So that we um. We live thriving lives and we're not suffering. Um, you know, there's no need to suffer in any capacity um, if there's something that we can do about it. And we can definitely do something about anxiety. So just to give you a little data so you can understand what we're talking about in the prevalence of anxiety in the U.S., over 40 million adults ages 18 and over suffer um, from um, anxiety. And there are um, a wide range of um, conditions under anxiety. You know, we talked about some of them in the previous sessions, um, generalized anxiety, social anxiety disorder, PTSD. Um, and so 40 million 
Americans are adults ages 18 and over. We're not even talking about the children. Mm -hmm. And so just the 40 million adults in the U.S. Um, suffering from anxiety, that's a huge, huge number. Um, the one condition I would like to point out and um, draw attention to is panic attacks. Um, panic attacks begin suddenly, sometimes without warning. You can't really understand and tell, like, why is this happening at this current time? Uh, the cause is unknown. Um, you know, experts say genetics, um, stress, um, you know, a, a function or, or, or the brain function plays a role in panic and in, in, in having panic attacks. And so um, the individuals that I have worked with, um, most of them experience panic attacks. And so um, before I explain to you all how anxiety work, um, I would like to pose this question. What is something that we cannot um, see, something we um, cannot hear, something that cannot be measured, um, but it has incredible power? And if you know the answer, put it in the chat. What is something that we cannot see, we cannot hear, or we cannot measure it, but it has incredible power? And I'm not talking about Jesus. Girl, I was, oh, no. I was like, that's Jesus. But then you said you can't hear, but I can hear him. So that's not it. <laughs> but I hadn't said Jesus. So. <laughs> right, right, right. So, and again, if you know, put it, put it in the comment section again. What is something that we cannot see, we can't hear, we cannot measure, but it has incredible power? I'll go ahead and tell you. It's our thoughts. Mm. Anxiety starts with, um, it starts with a thought in the mind. Um, and then it turns into certain feelings, which then um, produces certain behaviors. So if you think about it, it's the thoughts, it is the feelings, and then it is certain behaviors. Um, let me give you an example. You have a close friend um, or a neighbor who, you know, you've grown to know and you've grown to care for. Um, that individual tells you, hey, you know, I'm not feeling really well today. Um, you know, we were supposed to meet, but hey, let's cancel. I'm not really feeling well. You go on about your day. You then have this thought, hmm, my neighbor is sick. I wonder what's going on. Does she have cancer? Can she have cancer? Maybe it's cancer. Okay, that's the thought, right? Okay, so then once the thought happens, um, those feelings start to happen. You start to feel a little anxious, a little worried, a little um, tense. And then those behaviors start. Let me go read up on cancer. Let me try to find out and figure out, you know, how long does one have to live once they have cancer? And, you know, you start to drive your own self crazy, really, based off of something that probably is true and probably is not true. The point of this scenario is just for you to understand anxiety simply starts with a thought at times. It can start with a thought. It's fear based. You're fearing hey, my neighbor possibly could die. Again, no one said she had cancer. That's something that you thought. And all of a sudden you started to, um, you know, act in a manner uh, that some people would describe like something is wrong with you. You know, although we understand and I'm not minimizing at all um, anxiety or any other mental illness that individuals deal with because it is very serious. Um, but from the outside looking in, you know, some people would say like, what's going on? She just said she was sick and you've taken it from zero to 10 in, you know, 1.5 uh, seconds. And so who said your neighbor had cancer? You know, who says that whatever sickness she's dealing with is terminal? You know, who even said that what she's telling you is true. I mean, she may not even be sick. She probably just don't want to go to lunch. Who knows? But that one thought spiraled out of control and it caused you to then start to feel a certain way. It caused you to then um, start to, you know, display certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. The goal is to stop the thoughts. That's the goal. Stop the thoughts. We have the power to change our thoughts. We really do. We have the power to change our thoughts. And so um, just giving you that little background of kind of what, you know, anxiety is, the prevalence of anxiety and how it can start with a thought. Um, let's talk about what it may look like in a person or, or what what, you know, you can um, look for in order to, to maybe spot and say, hey, you know, that person may be experiencing a little anxiety. Um, 
to be, you know, honest, anxiety looks like me. It looks like you. And I'm not claiming anxiety at all, but that's how prevalent it is. It looks like the post office worker, you know, your hairdresser. It looks like your principal. It looks like your um, neighbor. It looks like your preacher. You know, it's very common um, that we experience anxiety. And so it may manifest in different ways. You know, individuals may have rapid speech and then individuals may um, become silent and not speak. Um, you know, um, it may manifest in children um, in isolation, not wanting to be around others. Um, if you had a kid or if you have a kid who worries excessively, not the normal, you know, um, worry that, you know, peers around their age group would not, but if there's excessive worry and excessive questioning, um, you may want to pay attention to that and look into that um, so that this doesn't develop into something bigger and you can get the help and support early on. Um, also, anxiety um, looks like someone spending money all the time, spending money, spending money, spending money. Um, also, you know, um, it can look like tears. It can look like laughter, you know, in certain situations. Um, it also can manifest through physical symptoms, you know, um, the shortness of breath, the, um, you know, uh, rapid breathing, the sweaty palms, um, digestive problems, in insomnia, um, you know, headaches and body aches. Um, those are physical symptoms of, um, you know, having anxiety. And so, you know, some of the ways that we can um, cope with um, anxiety or some of the recommended strategies or skills, I'll give you five um, that I, you know, think are great strategies. And um, we'll, I'll give you five from a cognitive, a physical, a behavioral, a mental, I'm sorry, a mindful, and then a spiritual perspective. So the first one, the cognitive perspective, challenge your thoughts, challenge them. I challenge my thoughts. If I'm on a plane and I have a thought, this plane will crash and I will die. Now I'm going to challenge that thought. What is the likelihood of this plane crashing? We had 10 planes leave the airport. Why would mine crash? So challenge those thoughts. When those thoughts come to you and it starts to bring panic or fear, um, challenge those thoughts. And then, you know, also try to assess the severity of the actual threat that's coming to you. Um, when we challenge thoughts and we just don't accept the thoughts, anxiety then um, it's interrupted. Yeah. You know, when we challenge them versus accepting them, um, it's interrupted. It stops. And then it allows you to focus on something else instead of focusing on that thought. What if the plane crash with the plane? Then I'll die. And when I die, who's going to take care of my child? Oh, I don't have life insurance. Oh, who's going to pay for this? Who's going to be? And it stops you from having all of those um, thoughts and it allows you to focus on something else. And then eventually you'll come to your senses and say, you know what? This doesn't even make any sense. Why am I even thinking this way? So challenge your thoughts cognitively, physically. Exercise daily. Exercise has been proven to release chemicals such as dopamine and in, in endorphins in your brain, which then um, allows you to feel happy. You know, exercise helps your brain to get rid of chemicals that makes you makes you feel stressed and anxious. And so, of course, exercising. Danielle is on this 30 day, um, you know, 30 yeah. minutes per day. And I mean, we see the benefits of what she's been doing. <laughs> my neck losing weight, child. My neck is losing weight. I'm here. I'm all right. Come on. Oh. I've oh. never heard of um, someone's neck losing weight, but I definitely can see a difference in you. So um, the physical exercise, there's benefits to that. You know, also making sure we're taking daily vitamins. I saw a change in my own personal life when I started to take my vitamin D on a consistent basis, my vitamin C, my zinc, my, um, you know, multivitamin. I saw a difference in my life when I started to take those things on a regular basis. And so taking vitamins, eating healthy, staying hydrated, um, we have to be intentional about those things. And it can't be just, you know, oh, I'll 
do it one day and the next day I won't. We have to be intentional about it. Okay. And then from a behavioral um, uh, perspective, again, we talked about anxiety being fear based. Um, approach what you fear, approach it, you know, within reason. Um, I'll give you an example. You know, if you're afraid of dogs and you believe in your mind for whatever reason, you know, any dog that I see um, possibly can bite me and, you know, give me a disease or it can kill me. So I'm going to stay away from all dogs. I'm not going to touch them or anything. Approach what you fear, you know, get in touch with someone who, you know, is a, a puppy owner, who's a great puppy owner, who takes care of their puppies and loves their puppies, you know, and, and they can help you, you know, establish a relationship with that puppy. They can help you, um, you know, learn to pet the puppy, to um, feed the puppy. And so, you know, that's called exposure. And so whenever we get exposure to things that um, bring us fear and anxiety, um, most of the time, those things that we're thinking about a particular thing is not even accurate. You know, I mean, there aren't dogs roaming around neighborhoods looking to kill people. That's just not true. Mm -hmm. And so um, facing your, um, you know, your fears, approaching what you fear um, from a behavioral perspective, um, that can help, too, with anxiety. And again, um, within reason, you know, I'm going to find a pit bull roaming the neighborhood talking about I'm about to go pet this, <laughs> this <laughs> pit bull. <laughs> no. <laughs> OK. And then uh, number four. Mindfully, from a mindful perspective, we can train our breathing as we focus um, on and practice relaxed breathing. Danielle started off this session with breathing, and um, that's something that I do throughout the day, you know, um, just to um, train myself on mindful breathing and, um, you know, being relaxed. And it's just something I do just every time I think about it, you know, um, I just start to deep breaths in and out, in and out. And so um, anxiety is fear-based again, and it is something um, that you're thinking about either the past or you're thinking about the future. And so you want to be in the present. And so being mindful, being in the present, not thinking about the past and not thinking about the future, because we are only responsible and capable of, you um, doing what we can do right now in the present. You know, we can plan for the future, but who's to say the plans that we plan will actually be carried out. Mm -hmm. um, and so being mindful of the present, um, focusing on the present, um, a lot of uh, the things that, you know, are ways I've helped people to be present mindfully um, is through grounding Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's through your five senses. You know, at this moment, I'm feeling anxious or fearful. What do I smell? What can I see? What do I see around me? Uh, what do I hear? You know, what can I touch? Um, what am I tasting in my mouth? And so um, that grounding technique then helps you to focus on something else. Mm -hmm. You're mindfully um, in the present. You're not thinking about you know, what I heard or saw yesterday or, you know, what am I going to see tomorrow? What am I seeing right now? You know, and again, being mindful in the present, it helps you to focus on the present and it takes your mind off of um, things of the past and the future, which then calms you down. And, um, you know, instead of focusing on the past or the future, um, you know, when we do that, it intensifies um, our anxiety and discomfort. So focusing on the present, being mindful of where you are currently and what you can do in the moment. OK. And then the last thing, number five, the last strategy from a spiritual perspective, um, this is my absolute favorite. And um, I got so excited even when I was um, writing and, and, you know, trying to figure out what I would discuss tonight. I got excited. I wanted to take a lap around my neighborhood as I was writing the spiritual portion. <laughs> um, because, um, you know, this out of all of the, the, the five strategies, this for me, this has been the one that has worked for me. Um, and I am confident that if, you know, um, 
you truly believe what you're saying from the spiritual perspective, if you truly believe it and you have faith in God, I truly believe that, you know, um, you can be healed like I was healed because I was healed from anxiety, healed from it. And so um, this is my favorite coping strategy. And again, it helped me, um, you know, in, in my personal life. Um, I self-talk. Right. I speak to any demonic force. I speak to any evil um, spirit around me. I quote the word of God. I bind the feeling of fear, the feeling of panic, worry, anxiousness, any associated symptoms. You know, the Bible tells us that we um, what we, you know, uh, bind in earth, that it will be bound in heaven. So, you know, I say, hey, I'm binding this fear right now. And if we bind it on earth, it'll be bound in heaven. And so what we loose on earth, it'll also be loosed in heaven. And then I start to say, you know, I lose peace. I lose calmness. You know, I lose safety right now. And as I started to say that, um, and this took time for me to, um, you know, get to a place to where I could recognize what was happening to me. And then I would start to say these things and it would leave, it would leave, it would leave every single time. And so, you know, again, I start to bind anxiety. I start to bind fear. I start to lose safety. I start to lose comfort. I start to lose peace. And then, you know, I also then say, you know, no weapon formed against me will prosper. You know, um, there's nothing too hard that God can't do. You know, he's given us power over every evil power. You know, I tell God that he came, that we have life and we have it more abundantly. You didn't come for me to suffer from anxiety. You didn't come for me to suffer from, you know, fear and panic and worry. You came that I have life and I want it more abundantly as your word says. And so as again, as I start to quote those things and as I start to say those things, the anxiety would leave every single time. Um, you know, I also would say, you know, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm not just a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. You know, I can do all things through Christ. He gives me the strength. And so you know, I also tell God, you know, you give us power over every evil power, you know, and I am not by no means saying that anxiety is an evil power or it's something that, you know, um, a spell that someone cast. I mean, I mean, mental illness is real. Anxiety is real. You know, it's I mean, it's, things can be passed down through genetics. Things can happen through, you know, substance use, uh, substance um, induced mental illnesses, you know, Things are real. But for me, I just found that with the spiritual um, perspective that I'm giving to you, it absolutely worked and changed my life. Um, again, I would then tell God, you know, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I am safe in your arms always. You know, I think on things that are lovely and that are true and that are a good, of a good report. And the things that I was thinking, it wasn't true. I'm mm -hmm. on this plane. It's going to crash. I'm going to die. No, his word told us to think on things that are true. And that's not true. So training myself to recognize what was happening and starting to speak the word of God, that changed my life. And, you know, um, every single time I experienced it, experienced what I experienced with having panic attacks, um, you know, and any of the physical symptoms that came with it, I began to, you know, speak the word of God, begin to pray. And um, I claimed my healing before my healing ever came. And so, um, Again, that's why anxiety is so near and dear to my heart. And anyone who comes to me and says, this is what I'm suffering with. I've had people call me at two, three, four in the morning. I can't sleep. I don't know what's going on. Can you pray with me? And I wake up out of my sleep happily because I truly believe God allowed me to go through that period in my life and heal me so that I can then be able to help others. And so um, I hope you all you know, learn something tonight. Um, it's been really good to be on here and to discuss this. And um, again, Danielle, thank you so much for this opportunity. Look, no problem. So there's a few things that um, was said, and I would, I really want to bring this up because I feel like nobody has talked about this um, yet. And I want to make sure that before we um, leave up out of here and and stop talking about anxiety that we actually address this. If y'all have any questions, make sure y'all put them in the chat and we'll get there and we'll answer them. But I want to say that one, 
um, with children that experience anxiety, sometimes that can look like aggression. So like a lot of times, especially within black boys, it can come off as them being overly aggressive because they don't know how to communicate and they don't know how to um, speak with what they need. So sometimes it comes off as aggression. So we have to be careful with that because like there are black boys and a whole thing. Y'all already know about what's going on, but I just want to make sure that when we, when you start seeing your child, that's normally a good child, don't have any problems. All of a sudden they start becoming aggressive and things of that nature, really go and take them for a um, psychological evaluation by a therapist. If your child is like, because anything could be going on and you need a therapist to actually help you understand what's going on. But within children, it can look like aggression. And a lot of times it looked like aggression in black boys. Um, and also I want to talk about, and if you can give some um, ideas about how we can support people or our family members, our loved ones that has anxiety and it has the panic attacks. Like how can we support them? Because to them it's real, but to mm-hmm. us, you just like, what you doing? But mm-hmm. how can we be there? And I, I know you mentioned earlier, and I'm glad that you said that, that, that some people can call you and you know, you pray for them in the middle of the night. So that is something that is good, you know, but like, if you can give like other tips, how people can be there to support a person who is suffering from anxiety. Right, right. And so before I answer that, Danielle, I'll go back to the statement you made about children experiencing anxiety, young black males, it comes out as aggression. Um, That is absolutely true because they do not know what is going on. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're feeling. They don't know how to um, articulate what they're feeling. And so it then comes out as aggression. And so I'm glad you, you know, made that point because that is absolutely true. And then, um, as I stated three, four, five times, anxiety is fear based. Mm -hmm. And so the number one thing um, I would recommend um, for family members, for friends, for neighbors, anyone, you know, experiencing anxiety, number one, make them feel safe. Yeah. Even if it is you literally um, grabbing them and wrapping them in your arms and holding them, you know, to let them know you are safe. Everything is okay. You will be okay. Um, You know, allowing them to know that they are safe. That's the absolute um, number one thing that I would recommend. And then something else, um, you know, checking on individuals to make sure, you know, are you taking your vitamins? I mean, I've had to go buy vitamins for people. Like, do you take vitamins and you don't take any vitamins? I'm telling you that changes something in your body and it helps. Because it it, it 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 allows you to take in areas where you're deficient. And I don't think any of us are totally filled with every vitamin, mineral, everything that we need in our bodies, because then we'll be perfect. And why would we be here if we're perfect? So um, I believe that we're all of us are deficient in some area. Right? And of course, it would be great to have some lab work to see your areas of deficiency. But... <laughs> I don't think vitamin C, D, zinc, I don't think any of that would hurt anyone. Um, and don't go load up on vitamins and say, Julie told you to do it and you get sick. Make sure you consult your, your doctor <laughs> first. Right. But checking on, you know, even if it's, hey, you know, have you been to a doctor lately? Have you had any lab work done? You know, are you deficient in any areas? You know, um, what vitamins can I buy for you? Are you, you know, having your, um, certain amount of water every day to stay hydrated. Also, um, this is going to look a little crazy, but um, this technique has helped me and it's helped others. So I want to show you if someone is experiencing anxiety for some reason, you take these two fingers here, your two fingers, make sure they're very firm. Um, and you can either do this or you can teach the your family member, a friend who's dealing with it really hard, these bones. Mm-hmm. Really yeah. hard, really hard. That will calm down your heart rate and get your heart back in sync. It will, um, you know, um, help you to be able to breathe better. Again, not sh- not not sure why that helps, but that helps. Um, another thing um, that I have found to help, and um, you know, I've talked to others um, when your heart is out of sync and it's beating rapidly. 
I don't know if you can see, let me pull this down a little. Um, if you just take your hand, take one of your hands, put it over your heart, and then you start to hit your heart to slow down, it, it helps to get your heart rate in sync and it slows your heart rate down. And so those are things, um, you know, that you can either do, you know, to someone or you can teach them. Um, but again, the number one thing is to make sure you help that individual know that they are safe and whatever you're thinking and feeling right now, it's probably not real. You're safe. You are OK. You will be OK. And again, therapy is not just for people who are experiencing psychosis and just, you know, um, you know, I, I just saw someone get shot. Therapy is to help all of us mm -hmm. to become better people, to navigate life, to understand who we are, you know, to communicate better. I mean, there's tons of reasons why you can go to therapy. And so I'm a big advocate for therapy. And I tell everybody enroll in therapy because right. it will change your life. So, OK. So, yes. Yes. Thank you so much for answering those. I just really want to make sure that we like talked about that and also you guys make sure like when a person is telling you or venting to you about that they have anxiety and stuff like that and they're not in a crisis do not invalidate their feelings you know right. do not be like oh you're just thinking about it. it's just in your head it's just this no be patient like if you know you can't be patient just be like, girl, hold on. Let me breathe or whatever. But <laughs> do not just go on a rant. Girl, that ain't that. That ain't that. That ain't that. Or just do not say, go pray about it. No, you take the time and you be like, girl, can we pray? Like, let's pray and stuff like that. Don't invalidate their feelings because to them, it is real and it is strong. Right. So sometimes you got to like really and truly be the intercessor for whoever that person is, especially if you're a spiritual, like really and truly go to God on their behalf. And as almost as you, it's you. That's how right. much passion that you need to have for that person because um, at the moment they don't have it for themselves. Right, right, right. And just one more thing to add, Danielle, none of us ask for anxiety. None of us want it. None of us pay for it. We didn't buy it. You know, we don't want it. So, you know, when people are telling you that they're feeling a certain way, as you stated, that, like, don't, you know, brush it off and minimize. I mean, that's something that they're really experiencing and they don't want it. They didn't ask for it. They don't want to experience it. And so making sure you're trying to support them as best as you could. And if you don't know what to do, um, make sure you call somebody so somebody else can help them. Or if you don't know what to do, just be there. That's the biggest thing that you can give anybody, your presence. If you, yeah. you say, I don't know what to say, but I'm here. And I right. like that. She'd be like, I don't know what to say, but I am here. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. That's it. And like that, that's, that's important too. You're still useful. I don't want you to think that you're not useful. Right have the words to say but you can make sure that they're safe like she said earlier to make sure that they are safe you know so all of that great stuff okay so let's see and so we got let's go into these comment sections and let's pull them up um come on so you can see look come on guys <laughs> <laughs> the fear that causes anxiety is otherworldly. We have to focus on God in those moments. Yes, yes. I agree. Yes. Come on, good stuff. What else we got? I, I know I've seen some questions down here. Um, I'm just going to put y'all because I'll make sure I get everybody up here. Let's see. Great job. All right. What else we got? Oh, look, oh, look. Let's see, because I've seen a question. Oh, here we go. Let's see. How do we know when someone is experiencing anxiety if that if the one going through it doesn't know? Mm, that's a good question. Um, because a lot of people may not know that they right. are experiencing ex anxiety and stuff like that, but still, if they don't know what it is. You mm -hmm. still can be there and still can help go with them to go figure out what it is or encourage them to go and figure out what it is, you know, by seeking medical professional help or seeking a therapist and stuff like that. So although we may not know what it is at that moment, still you can still encourage them to go and check on themselves. 
Right, right. Our body sig sends us signals. You know, we know when something is not right. We know when we're off balance. We know when, you know, we're not, you know, thinking straight or we're not feeling. I mean, we 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 get signals. And so, you know, if you don't know what you're experiencing, you don't know what it is. I mean, that is the purpose of having medical professionals, you know, having um, therapists, people to help you walk through life, to help you understand what you're dealing with and what you're going through and what you can do to better your life. Right. And I think that like, really, I'm just want to make sure I say this because I had somebody to, to actually do this one day. Um, they called on behalf of their friend and they was like, hey, I'm calling on behalf of my friend, blah, blah, this. I need them to come to therapy. But, you know, um, I just want to know your price and all of this and that. Like she did the work mm -hmm. and, and then she was just and I was like, if you want to come with her, come or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so um, she was like, OK, she was like. That right there made a whole different like she made sure that her friend got there, even though they didn't know what it was going on. Because like I know, like we call it something, but a lot of times we don't know, like you said about, you know, our bodies can tell us. So even if you don't know what it is, but going there and I just thought that that was so amazing for the friend to call and ask for the price and actually pay for it and actually show up with her. I thought that that was just so amazing. Right, right. That's good. Let's see what we got. And pay attention to your body. Disclaimer. She say, <laughs> disclaimer, consult your physician. Come on. <laughs> right. Julie didn't tell you nothing. <laughs> oh, um, he was saying tapping. Tapping is really good too, y'all. Yeah. Like, I use that for myself sometimes when I feel like I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> he was showing mm -hmm. out tapping, reduce anxiety. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I seen something else down here. Okay, here we go. Shabrika says, I feel like a burden on people, so I don't normally talk about it. Um, is she saying she feels like a burden on people, so she don't normally talk about like what she's feeling or experiencing? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Shabrika, I know you have people in your life that love you, I'm pretty sure you do, people who care about you, and um, you know. At times we do feel like we're burdens on people and we do feel like, you know, hey, you know, they may not have time to focus on what I need. Um, but nine times out of 10, people really want um, people to be OK. And, yeah. and you're not a burden, you know, um, you feeling like a burden. There's a reason you feel that way. And, um, you know, I'm not minimizing how you feel, but respectfully the way you feel is probably not the right way because there are people who care about you and who love you um in your life and they want you to be okay and they want you to be able to you know go to them when you feel like you need some help and and you know if they can't help you they can point you in the right direction or just be there for you and so um again you feeling like a burden not sure why you feel that way or where that's stemming from that's something you can navigate through within therapy you know why do you feel like you know you're a burden of people um because we shouldn't be burdens on you know our loved one our family our friend we should want to be able to help and to be there for one another and so um i just encourage you you know take what could you lose take it take a shot you know go to your family go to your friends um unless they're telling you look sis you a burden quit leave us alone if they didn't tell you that you're not a burden Take right. your shot and go to them and talk to them about what you're feeling, what you're experiencing. And, um, you know, you all figure out what the next steps need to be. I think that that's just a um, that's a trick of the enemy to keep mm -hmm. you in bondage, like right. point of period or whatever. Because when you start thinking that you don't want, you don't go seek the help or you don't go talk about it with your friends and your family and you just keep thinking about it over and over. So I just think that it's another attack, another trick from the enemy. And like, you have to be, uh, you know, aware of that. And plus, I'm gonna tell you this, from, from a therapist standpoint, I'd rather hear about your problems than listen to my own problems, okay? <laughs> So it's, you can be a good distraction to people. Like people love to help people because they yes. have to do with their own problems sometimes. I'm telling you, girl, I'd be right, like, right, right. you know, but again, I really do want to say that like that could really be a um, attack from the enemy, just making you feel that way so that you don't get it off of you or whatever. Right. So, 
Okay. Right. That's true. That's like being in a, a relationship, being in, a, in a, an abusive relationship. You know, that abuser does not want to be outed. You know, they don't want people to know what they're doing. They don't want people to know what they're saying to you when you're at home. They want everything to be, you know, um, you know, uh, cherries and whipped cream and ice cream in the public. Um, and they don't want to be outed. And so I agree with you. That is one of the tricks of the enemy to keep you where you are and keep you suffering. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Don't minimize. Yes. Come on here. What else we got? Let me go through these real quick. Breathe. Okay, I like this one. Breathe and Monica can help me and calm them. Right, right. That's true. Okay. Oh, we got to use your... Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, friend. <laughs> use your support system. Okay. Right, right, right. And if you can think you know, quickly, if somebody were to come to you in the middle of the grocery store, like down in the aisle of the grocery store, and they say, who's your support system? You should be able to rattle those names off. And if you can't rattle two, three names off, you need to find two or three people, you know, that you can say, hey, this is these people that this is my support system. This is, you know, who I can go to, you Mm -hmm. know, when I'm not feeling like I think I should feel or, you know, when I'm feeling something and I don't know what I'm feeling, you know, um, you should be able to rattle off who your support system is. That good. Know who a support system is right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's my friend. That's why I can do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are some breathing techniques? Um, we talked about in the beginning, once this video is done, like uh, we did the deep breathing uh, where you breathe in from your diaphragm and where you exhale with your mouth open and breathe out slowly. Mm-hmm. That's another um, breathing technique that can actually help you um, and stuff like that. So that's the one that I usually use a lot. And mm-hmm. like you exhale, like be aware of what's going on in your body too. Usually mm-hmm. like your everything starts to relax. You can really feel it to relax or whatever. And the last breath when you breathe, I usually do it three times in the last breath when you usually breathe out. Do not be so quick to go on. Really mm-hmm. self, really be present in what you're actually feeling and doing or whatever. Give your time yeah. to, give yourself time to come back. I mm-hmm. like to say that you know because sometimes we can be caught up. Right, right. And then another breathing technique. I mean, I know it looks crazy to people when you see people going in out of paper bags, but that yeah. truly helps, you know, getting some uh, form of, of um, you know, whether it be in, inside of your, your own shirt or paper bag, that helps. Again, not uh, I don't really know why the reasoning <laughs> behind why it helps because of the, I guess, enclosed bag. But um, that breathing technique, it helps, too. Mm-hmm. Let's see, Shaquita say I'm going to try to t- um, the tap and I think that might be helpful for me. Yes. Make sure it's hot. Make sure your fingers are firm and make sure you hit yeah. those bones hard all the way up from because the you're, moving, mm-hmm. you're moving the pressure and um from your from up here to wherever you go, you know what I'm saying? So you're actually moving it. So mm-hmm. that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, talking to friends, okay. Well, we got talking to friends or family is temporary fix. Therapy is the best because it gets you on the path to healing. Yep. Yes, that's it. That's it. I have one and two grandsons now. Give me a quick tip. <laughs> she said she have them right now. <laughs> Give me a quick tip. Just take a walk outside and go get a breather and go back in. <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> Either y'all can give them some deep, y'all you give some. I ain't gonna say that. I'm gonna say Benadryl, but go consult with your doctor first. <laughs> consult with your physician. <laughs> Let's see what we got. And relax those. All right, yes, and relax those shoulders doing the breathing. Tune out the background noise. Yes, mm-hmm. ma'am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do it every time I go to the bathroom. That a long time take a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elaine is crazy, but you're so right. You are blowing all of those problems out. Yes. 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 You can tap those areas <laughs> in the most tension. All right. Yes. Come on here. 
you know, <laughs> these therapists giving away these tips tonight, okay? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> we go right. <laughs> Go give them to their grandpa. <laughs> right. <laughs> Return to sender. <laughs> yeah, go give them to their grandpa. Okay, <laughs> let's see. All right, what she says. Something you have to learn to speak to your anxiety. And I learned that it took me a while. Every time the negative thoughts came, I just learned to cast them down fast. My brain was my biggest depression. But I have gotten up so much better. I am so glad. Uh, thank yes. you for sharing that with us. Um, really and truly appreciate that. So everybody can see this. Like, right. you see the fact that you're not alone. In right, right, right. People right. suffer from this. And when you said the 40 million, I was just like, that's just the 40 million that's accounted for. Imagine how many people are not accounted for, you know? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And I wanted to speak to um <laughs> Aline is correct. Symmetrics, um, the previous comment. Um, when you're able to recognize what is going on, um, and you're able to catch, you know what? Okay, I see what's going on, I see what's happening, I know what's going on. When you're able to catch it because you know what you're dealing with. Versus, you know, the person who I'm, I'm going through something, I'm experiencing something. I don't know what this is and I don't know what to do because I don't know what this is. OK, you know what it is. You're, you know, then learning to, um, you know, I, I, I know it's coming. I feel it's coming. I can recognize what's coming. OK, I'm in defense mode now. This is what I need to do. And so I think that's great, Symmetris. And again, thank you for sharing that, because. Again, you know, thoughts that comes, uh, you know, to, to our minds. Um, Ninety percent of the time, those thoughts aren't even they're, right. they're not valid. Right. And we can't stop them. Right. We can control them, though. We can, you know, we can cast them down, mm -hmm. but we cannot stop them from coming. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of y'all may be like, but why am I still dealing with this? Why am I still there? Because we can't stop it, you mm -hmm. know? But right. you can't, I tell people you can't stop it, but how you react to it. Right. 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 I'm a patient. <laughs> you can <cutting> up. <laughs> Let's see. Self love, self care. It's a must. Yes. yes. Now yes. take yes. take time to plan for self care. If you do not, your body <laughs> is gonna make you make time. Yes. It. Okay. Right. 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 So and a part of plan. right a part of self care is. Making sure you're taking your vitamins, you're staying hydrated, you're eating healthy, you're exercising. All of those things reduce anxiety. It does. Exercising, eating right, taking vitamins and staying hydrated, it reduces anxiety. My walking has helped me, y'all. <laughs> Come on, my trip, take a vacation. I'm on there right now. Let me tell you something. Tasca is baby Michelle Obama. Okay, she's <laughs> on flight every month going somewhere. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm here for it. I am here for it. So let's see. Oh, she said I need a vacation. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, then, everybody. Thank y'all so much for watching tonight. Um, make sure y'all share this live with somebody. Um, that's the best thing that we can do for people, especially for the loved ones um that you care about share with them no matter if they watch it or not um people tend to have this thing you know they'll watch it in the late hours in the wee hours okay right, right. So, like, it's just important that you just share it with them and just be like hey i watched this tonight and i think that you might need it or if you don't just pass it along to somebody and just plant the seed that's all we require to do that's what we're doing here we're just planting the seed and we just allow God, God to water it into blossoming and grow it or whatever. Right. Well, thank you so much, ma'am, for joining me. Okay. So, y'all, tonight is the last night until Sunday. Okay. Because I am taking a vacation. Okay. So, I will see you guys again on Sunday. Um, what it is, May the 16th. We will start, we would go into that week and we'll start talking about um self-love, self-esteem as well. That week in the last week of the month, we're going to talk about finding your voice. I'm excited about 
these last two about self-esteem, self-love, and finding your voice. Those are the last two weeks of the month. Um, thank y'all so much. If you got any questions, comment, y'all make sure to um inbox me and I'll make sure to um bring them up at the next time. So I'll see y'all on Sunday, okay? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Let me see Angie's broadcast.